Uh, welcome to the uh, Eric JD uh, Great Podcast Show. We got a, a special guest today, um, author Marva Riley. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Eric. Thank you for having me this evening. Oh, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. You hearing me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Oh, I'm doing awesome, and thank you for having me this evening. Oh, no problem. You know, I do these type of uh, episodes all the time. I know. I've been listening to your episodes, and uh, when I discovered you, I started, uh, I subscribed to your channel, your YouTube channel, and I've been listening to your podcast. Uh, they're really good. I like them. Oh, uh, what episodes you listen to so far? I know uh, my two most popular ones is from the first season, and that was in 2020. I did an episode on police brutality and fake friends, and I still get people DM me about the episode all the time. Well, that, I haven't gone back that far yet. I did listen to the one you did with uh, the author Marie oh, uh, yeah. that you that you posted today. And there was another one that I listened to. I think the lady is a fitness trainer. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. She's in, uh, dang, I forgot what's, oh, she's in uh, Ohio. That's where she's at, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I liked it. Well, we'll just uh, start from the beginning and then we'll work our way up to uh, what you got going on now. So uh, first off, uh, where you from and uh, how old are you? Okay, I am originally uh, from the island of Jamaica, mm -hmm. but I immigrated here in 1989. So I've been here for a while. I can say that I consider the United States to be um, my home really, to be <laughs> honest with you, because I've spent more time here than I, than I spent in Jamaica where I was born and raised. Um, I'm 60 years of age. I just celebrated my 60th birthday um, last month in May 25th. Oh, wow. Well, you, you're aging good. I want to thought you were 60. Oh, yes. <laughs> I want to talk to you now. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, so what's the first thing that, um, that comes to your mind when you hear Jamaica? When I hear Jamaica, I think of my parents. My mom still lives there. My mom's 84 years old and still lives in Jamaica. Very simple lifestyle in the country parts. Has absolutely no health issues. Well, she'll say actually that she has a touch of blood pressure issue, but I think it's mainly because she stresses herself out a little bit. But um, she's very healthy. She's very strong. My adopted dad also is 89 years old and is in his right mind, does all of his acti activities himself. He cooks and washes his clothes by hand and, and goes to the grocery Sorry, himself. There's nothing to repeat. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> I was trying to put my phone on silent. That's all right. So they're the epitome of health and um. Those are the things I remember growing up in Jamaica that uh, folks got old, but they were still healthy in their elderly uh, days. Um, that's, those are some fond memories. I also think of the tropical fruits <laughs> that are available in Jamaica all year round. Like mango is my favorite fruit and I wish I was there right now. I would just be eating a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, mango, mango is good. Uh, when you say, when you uh, say how people age old there and still had good health, uh, that reminds me of uh, a person that I uh, follow and still follow to this day, even though he passed away, was uh, Dr. Sevy. I, I take some of his products. So, uh, yeah, that kind of, what that's what that reminds me of. Yes, doctor, I'm... Doctor, I'm a, I'm a Dr. Sebi's um, disciple, if you will, because several years ago, I was deathly ill with all kinds of health issues. I was diagnosed with a, a very uh, life-threatening um, 
heart disease called cardiomyopathy. And the cardiologist told me that I probably would die if I didn't have heart transplant. And I had um, depression and anxiety. I had headaches every single day, allergy issues. I had trouble breathing, GERD, gastric reflux, H. pylori, joint pain. I was just sick all over. And I remember one of my coworkers said to me, have you heard of Dr. Sebi? Never heard of Dr. Sebi because nurses and physicians in this country in particular, where you could almost say we're drug, push, drug pushers. We're not really into um, the holistic health that I'm an advocate of right now. We, we give drugs and that's all I knew. And I started researching Dr. Sabi. It was just mind blowing what I heard. And I also realized that Dr. Sabi was not really a medical doctor but he had so much knowledge. You could ask him any question and he would be able to answer it. So I started incorporating some of his teachings in my lifestyle, like eliminating meat and going plant-based, which hopefully we'll talk a little bit more about tonight. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, describe how I was uh, growing up for you as a kid and, um, and describe your household as far as did you have both parents and uh, any siblings? That's a great question. There are actually 10 of us. My, my mom had two uh, kids before she met my dad. And then she had eight kids with my dad. And then uh, my dad took onto himself another woman and moved out and uh, left my mom with all eight kids, the, the two older ones, my, my mom's mother, my grandmother, and my grandfather took them. But my mom was left with the other eight of us. And she pretty much struggled to raise those children with very little help from my dad. Um, at about age eight years old, my aunt and her husband who could not have children of their own kind of, unofficially adopted me as their child. And that was not a good experience. Um, it was a traumatic experience for me with them. They were very physically and emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what, what activities were you into as a kid? Did you play any sports or did you do any like uh, play chess or what, what would you, what did you did, do? <laughs> In all honesty, Eric, I didn't really have much of a childhood. Um, my adoptive parents, um, they were business owners. They had a restaurant and a grocery store and a little bar attached to it. And I was one of, like one of their hired help. I was there. I would go there early morning. I didn't have a choice. I had to leave the house and go to the shop. And then I would put an apron on and I would work for two hours before going to school. And that started at a very young age. And then during my lunch break, I had to head back to the restaurant to help. And I helped and shoveled down some food, head back to school. And after school, it was repeated. And the next day, the same thing. So I really didn't get a chance to participate in any, much of any extracurricular activity. I was involved in church, um, but not, not as involved as I would have liked as my friends were involved, but that's the extent of any extracurricular activity. Okay. So as far as like you was growing up and uh, as a teenager and transitioning to adult, um, did you have anybody in your family um, that was a, that was an author or involved in uh, his uh, holistic health. I didn't actually. I didn't have any. Hmm, no, I did not have any family or friend who was an author. And I got involved in whole. I always wanted to be a nurse. Hmm. Um, growing up in in Jamaica, 
I always wanted to be a nurse. The nurses were, were respectable people. They are the ones that the neighbors would run to um, when they were sick. And I just liked it. And they just, they were people of status, nurses and teachers and police officers. And I just liked what they stood for. So I always, and I always loved people and wanted to help people. So I wanted to be a nurse. I didn't have the opportunity when I was in Jamaica to study to be a nurse because uh, shortly after I finished high school, I had to go find a job. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came to the States, that's when I worked and studied in Jamaica. In those days, we didn't really have the opportunity to study and work. So it was either or. Here I was able to work, study, and pay my way. And even then, I was not into holistic health because the conventional Western medicine does not embrace holistic health. Mm. I became involved with holistic health when I was deathly ill. And I knew that conventional medicine was not the way to go because I was having severe allergies, for example. And I knew that if I went to the emergency room or if I went to my doctor, what they were gonna give me was Benadryl. And I didn't want that, it's a Band-Aid or steroids. So when I started doing a lot of research, everything pointed like, researching Dr. Sabi and Dr. Furman and those people, everything pointed to healing through holistic health and holistic lifestyle. And that's when I embraced the philosophy of holistic lifestyle. I don't do drugs. Whatever is happening with me, I find like Dr. Sabi teaches, a holistic way, a herb, a bush as they say in Jamaica, Sometimes it's sunlight, sometimes you need extra water, sometimes you just don't have enough rest. But whatever is ailing us for the most part is due to our poor lifestyle. All right. Um, yeah, I interviewed, um, I met this girl off Clubhouse. I forgot, I think it was about eight months ago. She sent me some sea moss because she has our actual business on holistic health and she sent me some sea moss and that was the first time I ever heard of it about eight months ago and uh she sent me like two jars of it and uh, I was like yeah this is something different because I ain't never got into nothing like that all I had was the uh immune booster pills with Dr. Sebi and I take another pill with him I had to go look at the bottom but yeah um so as far as like your book writing um, what led you to doing that? Like, um, did you write as a kid or was that something that you embraced when you became an adult? I didn't really write as a kid, but um, when I became an adult, um, about 25 years into my first marriage, I went through divorce. It was very traumatic and um, very traumatic. And I remember my sister would tell me, you need to journal. It will help you to deal with the stress. And I really even then did not embrace journaling. But what I did was turn to reading the Bible. Because even though I was a good church girl, I would go to church, but you know, you hear what the pastor says. And, and then at after 25 years of marriage, it just everything was just crumbling. It just didn't make sense. So I turned to the Bible for answers and I read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation four times and things just started coming together and I started understanding a little better. Now, after that, two years after that, I met whom I thought was gonna be my forever husband, my dream guy. And he would uh, bring me flowers and rub my feet and give me breakfast in bed. He was just so amazing. And I would just swear to God, he was going to be my forever God. And then two years after that, he said, listen, I'm going to bounce. This is not for me. I don't want to be tied out with any woman. Well, I thought I was traumatized by my first divorce. This one just left me. It just left me crazy. I wanted to to commit suicide, I wanted to die. I mean, nothing made sense because I had prayed and asked God to provide just a perfect mate for me. And I thought it was him and it just went sour. And then I started journaling. 
I started writing my feelings. Actually, when I first started journaling, um, Eric, it was not really much of a gratitude. I was cussing. <laughs> I was cussing. I was even cussing God. Okay, I was so angry. And um, and then eventually it turned from cussing God to thanking God. And I would spend a lot of time in meditation and prayer and uh, things just kind of started making sense. And then I met this amazing, wonderful man that I'm with now. <laughs> And he would say to me, you know, you write so much journal, you should put it in a book. He said, you should put it in a book. But I had thought some years ago of writing my life story because I said, I had said to him, even if nobody ever reads my story, if my grandkids and my children read the book, at least I would have gotten the story out there. And he said, why not? You have a great story. You should write a book publish it and it will help other people because you're not the only one going through these things and that's what led me to write uh to write my book i felt like i had a story to tell like everybody else has a story to tell but i just felt like other people could benefit from my story right and uh what you go back to as far as like the uh what you said about the suicide and being depressed and things like that. You know, um, I'm a real big advocate of behavior health. I did a podcast episode on that about, I think it was about almost a month ago, but, uh, you know, I went through deep depression and I was in the military. So when I got medically retired from the military, you know, going on deployments and things like that, losing friends, that I was close to in the service. So I know those kind of familiar with those type of feelings going through that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Eric, I, during my research on my book, I found out that nurses have, nurses and even physicians too, have the highest rate of suicide. Mm. So I can understand, you know, military uh, workers too, it's, 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 excess pressure and stress on military people and on the healthcare people. And then to compound all of that, I was also going through menopause and all of this was happening. And then the divorce, it's, it's very traumatic. And uh, we just, um, May was National Mental Health Awareness Month. And it really, led me to uh, think a lot about all the stresses that people are going through, um, whether it's illnesses, um, whether it's divorce, death, or whatever the loss is. I've experienced all of that. And I've covered all of that in, in my, my, especially my first book, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health. Because in my book, I want to show people that, listen, I was mentally ill. I wanted to die. I remember my one night, my sister came over to my house and she just wrapped me up in a blanket and she said, you will live and not die. And I would say, I want to die. And she would say, you will live and not die. So I want to show people that I was severely depressed and I wanted to die. I had heart disease and I thought I was going to die because the doctor said, if you don't have heart transplant, you might die. And how many people get an opportunity to have heart transplant? I was paralyzed with, with arthritis. I could hardly walk. I would go to bed at night and I wouldn't sleep for more than two hours. And I had to work the next day. I want to show folks that no matter where you are in life, there is hope. No matter where, where you are in life, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay depressed. You don't have to stay suicidal. You don't have to stay sick. There is hope for total, holistic, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical healing. All right. So um, uh, just a quick trivia question. Um, what, what are some of your, uh, who are some of your favorite authors and uh, who is, some of your favorite people that's big on the holistic health side? Well, like I, I mentioned before, like we both spoke about Dr. Sebi, 
Dr. Sabi is amazing, was amazing. I mean, really sad about the whole situation with him. I love Dr. Mark um, Furman and Dr. Mark Hyman. I learn a lot um, from them. There's also a African-American physician called Dr. Kim Williams. They're all holistic health practitioners that I learned from because they're always doing independent research, research as independent of big pharma, research as independent of the FDA or independent of the food industry because the food industry and the drug industry is really about money. The healthcare industry is about money. So these physicians that I follow and like and learn a lot from, they, they conduct the independent reviews and the independent studies. So they're not rigged. That's why when folks read and they say studies show this and studies show that, you got to say see who financed the study. Whose study is it? Because sometimes these studies are rigged, if you will. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as your books, like uh, how many books do you currently have out right now? And um, just um, just give a brief description about each one of them and the titles, things like that. Okay. So my first book is um, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's like Guide. That. Yeah, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health. This was my first book that I published in 2020. Okay. And um, it's a it's a mix of a memoir and a guide. It tells my story of being deathly ill and what I did to heal myself and where I am. It has some, a few recipes in it and step-by-step -step guide as to how people can bring themselves from being deathly ill like I am to being totally well. Um, if we have health issues that we're not able to eradicate, it's generally because of some things that we're not doing right. We're not eating healthy. We're not exercising enough. We're not getting adequate sleep. We're not drinking enough water. We're not getting any sunlight and fresh air. We're stressed out and we're not having fun. That's the, that's the essence of it. So many people are so stressed out every day that they turn to eating junk as a comfort food. Some people are so stressed out every day that they don't sleep, you know? And we also have to relearn the way we eat, just like Dr. Sebi said. There are many things that Dr. Sebi said we should not eat, okay? And for sure, Dr. Sebi said, don't eat hot dog, hamburgers, and those things. That's part of my teaching in, in my books. La using lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, to take you from a point of being unhealthy or sick and converting those unhealthy lifestyle to healthy lifestyle to take you from being unhealthy to being totally well like I am. I'm 60 years old and I have absolutely no health issues, none. I don't have any blood pressure issues, no diabetes issues. I'm the healthiest weight that I've ever been. I sleep very well. And I know that if I can be healthy at 60, so can you and so can everybody else. If we're willing to do the work to change the way we eat and change our overall lifestyle. That's the essence of my first book. My second book is called SHARE. It's an acronym for simple, healthy, easy, and inexpensive recipes. Now, when I wrote my first book and I started a Facebook group and I got onto Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, et cetera, and there were so many, and I cooked these tasty uh, recipes every day and I would post them on my group and on my page and, and people had so many questions. Okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do I eat healthy? And I realized then, 
that people want to eat healthy, they just don't know how, and also they don't have the time. So my husband said, every day you whip up these easy, I mean, within 15 to 20 minutes, dinner is ready. It tastes different all the time and it is so delicious. You need to start writing these recipes down and you need to publish a book. And that's how that happened. I started writing them down every day because I prepare a fresh meal every day for him. Mm -hmm. and, and then I just kind of compiled everything, gave it to my editors and they made this amazing book, which has over 120 simple, healthy, easy, and inexpensive recipes that you can whip up for your family in less than half an hour. Okay. So the, uh, those are the only two books you have out right now? These are the two books I have right now. I, today, actually, I started writing another book because so many folks struggle with overweight and obesity. And overweight and obesity is the number one cause of chronic health issues such as diabetes, heart disease, um, type two diabetes, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, et cetera, to name a few. And as we know, we're just out of COVID one of the pre-existing condition that kind of uh, made us more susceptible to COVID was overweight and obesity. And every year folks make New Year's resolutions to lose the weight, but they start January and by March, they fall off the wagon, they go back to their the old ways. And I'm convinced that it it's not necessarily what people want to do. They just need a little bit more guidance. And the, the diet industry and the gym industry and the shake industry and those things, they're the ones whose voices are the loudest. And they're telling people you have to join the gym and you have to be at the gym for two hours to look thin like Mary. And they're telling people to drink these shakes and take these pills. Well, these things are unsustainable. So I decided to write a book with 12 steps to show folks that losing the weight and keeping it off for good is really not as complex as they think. Um, so that I'm working on. Okay. So as you start uh, putting out these books, and you know, someone can push you to do something and then they'll give you a little get up to actually do it. But you, you don't really get reassurance in what you're doing until you actually do it and you put it out and then you start getting people reactions. So when you uh, put these books out, um, how was uh, people that you knew and people that you didn't know uh, was receiving these books like as far as the feedback? The feedback was excellent from the very beginning. In fact, <laughs> prior to my publishing my first book, I did not have a presence on social media. I'm private. I never went on social media. When everybody was going crazy about social media, I just would not go on social media. But when I published my first book, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health, Amazon, I went on Amazon to do a webinar and they said, you just have to get on social media because that's where everybody is. So I went on, created a profile, sent a few friend requests and everybody was saying, Marva, was that you or was that a scammer or somebody sending me a request because I know you're not on Instagram and you're not on Facebook, and you're, not, you're, not, you're not. But I had actually started a YouTube channel maybe a year and a half before where I was posting little things, you know, about my garden or my health and things like that. When I went on social media and I launched my book, so many hundreds of my books sold and I did not know the most of the people who bought my book, I did not know who they were. Wow. And I've gotten so many reviews. If you go on Amazon, if you go on goodreads.com, you'll see I have so many reviews from people that I do not know stating how they have been helped. They've been given hope. 
Um, there are two people that contacted me on YouTube because they saw my video about how I was deathly ill and now I'm well. And they told me that they have end stage heart disease. And they've actually started following, they started following me on Instagram, on Facebook. I have a professional a basketball player, I will not say who it is, who is a follower of mine on Instagram and is in my Facebook group because he had issues. He followed the steps that I suggested in my books and has gotten results. So that's generally the feedback I'm getting. Regarding my recipe book, folks have just welcomed it. They're so happy to see that they can actually prepare healthy meals for their families in no time because people are so busy. When they get home from work, they don't have two hours to prepare dinner, but they can take 15 minutes and whip up something and not feel guilty because they know that it's healthy. So yeah, my family and friends have been very supportive. My hobby has been very supportive and I've gotten great reviews about both of my books. Okay. So do you, uh, so do you write a lot like, um, uh, now or is this is just something that comes randomly? I write, I write a lot. Um, I actually have a website. Um, it's rnmarvareilly.com and I do some health blogging on my website. Mm. Um, yes, I do some health blogging on my website. Um, blogging health tips, blogging recipes, blogging fitness uh, motivation. So I, I do quite a bit of that. I also have um, a monthly, a free monthly health and wellness newsletter that I write. I put it all together um, and I do that every month. So that takes some creativity and um, and some um, writing too. And um, our listeners, your listeners can sign up for my free health and wellness newsletter on my website, rnmarvareilly.com. Okay. And, and I also still do my um, journaling. And I actually, now that you asked that question, there are two other books that I started this year. And... Um, kind of have them on hold a little bit because I have actually decided to go back to school to study to be a certified health coach because I feel that that would enable me and empower me a little bit more to be of more help um, to people. So I'm busy studying that and I'm hoping to finish and get my certification before the end of the year. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's what's up. Um, so as far as, you know, your direction with your books, are you um, going to stay in this lane that you have for your first two books? Or are you going to um, switch gears and write about something else? Or, or how, how are you approaching that? I'm going to stay with holistic health and wellness because it's such a broad field and such a well-needed field and a necessary field. The he health is a crisis around the world. People are so sick from eating bad food, from not exercising, from being stressed out, from smoking, that they need as many voices as possible to preach the good news of health, drug-free health. So I, uh, I'm deeply, deeply passionate about this um, subject. So I will continue to research and I'll continue to write and I'll continue to speak and I'll come on your podcast as often as I can because it is necessary. Too many people are dying too young and I am particularly passionate about the African-American communities because when I go out, I see the, 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 the obesity and the overweight. And I know it doesn't have to be that way. And I see young people unable to walk and having to be in a scooter or a wheelchair. 
I want to be able to, to help them and to show them that there's another way that they have to unlearn some habits, but it's possible one step at a time. So yes, I think it's a necessary area. I'm not going to um, branch out into um, fiction or anything like that. I'll stay with health and wellness because it is necessary. I'm a voice that is needed. I'm a nurse. So I, I'm knowledgeable about the subject and I know traditional health care is not the answer. We need preventative uh, health care. All right. So as far as um, are you going to eventually do one about your life story? I think you should do that. Actually, my first book, um, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health, the, the red book, that's, uh, I had to say the first half of the book is about my life story. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a memoir and a guide. And it, it, it's a memoir. It's, it's a story of how I was deathly sick because a lot of the illnesses, Eric, that I went through were related to some of the traumatic experiences that I had as a child and manifested itself because I sought alternative health treatment, acupuncture, and another treatment called um, protocol called NATE, okay, that uses energy and sound and tapping to heal. And when I was undergoing the treatment for three years, it revealed that a lot of the physical symptoms I was having was related to the traumatic experiences that I had as a child and as a young as a young adult and into my adult life going through two divorces. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so what are some things that you uh, like doing when you're not uh, writing books or preparing to write another book? Wow, I love I'm a fun girl. <laughs> I just had my 60th birthday and I, and I celebrated the entire month. I love to dance. So I love live entertainment. Like I stay just outside of Augusta, Georgia now. I lived in South Florida for over 30 years. And then we recently moved to a little town called Renz, just uh, south, close to Fort Gordon. Maybe you've gone to Fort Gordon as a military person in Augusta. And um, they have live concerts, uh, summer concerts on Sunday evenings. And we were there last night and I'll shake my booty out there. <laughs> I love to dance. I love to garden. I love to meet people. I love to travel and I love the arts. Like going to plays uh, for my actual 60th birthday. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we went to see a jazz concert and we also went to see the symphony concert. So I love life and I enjoy life and it's part of the holistic equation. Okay. So um, as far as your goals, what are your short and long-term goals as far as um, your, your book, um, author career and holistic health in general and life goals too? Okay, I would like to get the opportunity to speak on as many platforms as I can about health. Um, I'd like to tell folks, I'd like to give folks hope and let them know no matter where they are. I see a lot of sick people when I go out. I like to people watch. They can't walk and uh, they're barely limping. You can tell they have back pain and they have hip pain and they have health issues. I wanna talk to these folks and tell them that they have hope. So I'd like as many platforms like this, your podcast, I know you have a big following and I'd like to talk to your people. I'd like to talk to the, 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 uh, the people of other podcasters. I'd like to be on different platforms just to talk about health. I'd like to keep writing about health, different aspects of health, because um, it's not just about physical health. It's not just about what we eat. It's not just about the exercising. We have to also deal with the mind. We have to also deal with the spirit. So I want to be able to write books connected to all of that, even 
finance actually has a lot to do with her overall health. Because if you don't have a job, if you have no source of income, if you can't pay your mortgage, if you spend too much money on that credit card, all of those financial issues can derail your health goal. So I wanna speak to that also. And in fact, I did start writing a book about that. I put it on hold right now because I felt that I needed to write the 12 steps to lose the weight and keep it off. Plus I'm studying for the health coach certification, but yes, I wanna address finance. I wanna address mental health. I wanna address spiritual health. And you can write so much on those subjects. I'd like to also be able to sell a million copies of each of my books. Um, it's not about the money, but we all need some money to live. But really the essence of it is that if I sell a million copies of my books, it means that I am reaching or have reached at least 1 million people across the globe, not just the United States. In fact, I, I have, um, there are people from Australia, from England and the Caribbean that, and Canada that have purchased um, my books. So I am touching the world one person at a time. And that's my short and long-term goal. Yeah, that has to uh, feel good to know that you're touching people in all those different areas. I know uh, me personally, I was just talking to my auntie the other day and I was, uh, I know this guy uh, that's an author too. Mm -hmm. And um, he has a, a, a course that he shows people how to write books and put it in every possible store that you can uh, put it in. So uh, I want to write a book about my life story, you know, as far as like what I went through in the military, how I grew up and stuff. So I think, because uh, um, I, um, uh, I forgot what um, the interview I did. It was like almost a year ago with an author, but um, I, uh, I told her that, oh, Molly aside, yeah, uh, she's a, she wrote a book about uh, God and uh, it's actually a number one seller. She became a millionaire off the book. She's from Puerto Rico. It's wonderful. And uh, one thing I told her was that, you know, I feel like I meet every profession, but I rand rarely come across authors. I feel like that's like one of the smallest groups of people. So I was like, when I do come across them, I kind of admire those people because it takes a lot to, uh, even if you're not just writing about your life story in general, like if it's just something that you're passionate about and uh, just putting your personal thoughts in a book, knowing that thousands of people is going to see what how you feel about certain topics and stuff, I, mm -hmm. I feel like that takes a lot of courage to do. Yes. It does, but um, the thing is that we all have a story. Uh, if we would listen to others, they also want to tell their story. They just don't have the opportunity to put it in a book. And I'm quite sure that there are several people that will benefit from your story. In fact, I just met, just this past weekend, met several military persons in Augusta, Georgia. And one gentleman yes, I met yesterday, he, he's an amputee. His leg, one leg is, um, is amputated. Another one that he cannot walk, you know, and um, they, they have a story. It's just that they don't, they don't have a voice. They don't have a, a forum to talk about what, what they've been. So you would be the voice of thousands of military persons um, you'd be their voice telling their story through your story. So you, you really should do it. I felt when I wrote my first book, I told my husband and I told my sister and my kids, I said, listen, if I can touch the life of one person by writing this book, then my mission would have been accomplished. And the other day, my sister said to me, I reminded my sister and she said, and sis, 
you have touched many more than one, even those that you do not, you're not aware of. Because she's, she's, I send a, a monthly um, health and wellness newsletter out. So folks have to sign up. And my sister's friend in Canada had signed up. I didn't know, you know, the person signed up. So she got my uh, newsletter and she said, the lady called and said, uh, Marva is a, is a celebrity now. <laughs> She's all over the place now. And she looks so awesome. She inspires me. So here I am touching someone that I don't even know, never met. Just by writing my story, she bought my, my, my two books. So she's read those stories and also through writing my newsletter because my newsletter is about my life. Like my last newsletter was about my 60th um, birthday party and I posted pictures of you know, what we did, et cetera. And that inspires people to live, live your life, live your life now. Don't wait until tomorrow, enjoy your life right now. I didn't have a huge 60th celebration, but I said, Anthony, we're gonna do something. And I planned that we went to Charlotte. We'd never been to Charlotte and we had such a great time. We've got to live our life now because tomorrow is not promised. But as we live our best life now, we will touch the lives of other people. Right, I, uh, I totally agree with that. So as far as uh, what you currently working on now and what you got going um, in the future, uh, just um, what you got coming up for 2022, for the rest of 2022 and you know, <laughs> 2023, if you got any titles you want to drop for the books that you're currently doing or, you know. Yeah. For for 2022, uh, my goal is to publish the 12 steps to losing the weight and keeping it off for good. I'm not sure if that will be the title, but that will be the theme of the book. To show, con a, write a condensed book, a short book that folks can refer to, to show folks how they can systematically lose that weight and keep it off for good rather than this yo-yo thing. That's my goal for 2022. Also, I am expecting to finish my health coach certification program and become certified so that I can be of a little bit more help to some people. So those are the goals for the rest of 2022. For 2023, I'd like to continue writing, but I also would like to be able to go out now that COVID is kind of behind us. I'd like to be able to go out to conferences and to speak on a larger level to folks. We hear doctors speaking all the time, but I don't really hear any nurses speaking. And we're the ones that are right there with the patients, taking care of the patients. We know a lot. Nurses are brilliant people. So I'd like to be able to get out there on the platforms. Like yesterday, I, I met a gentleman who is a VFW, veteran of foreign wars, I think it's called, VFBFW. And he told me that he's going to uh, invite me to speak next month at one of their large meetings in South Carolina. And I'm looking forward to that because since I became an author, I haven't had the opportunity to go to conferences and, and workshops and things like that because, because of COVID. So that will be one of my focus to get out there next year uh, on the campaign of spreading the good news of holistic health. Okay. And uh, also, um, have you collabed with any art? Um authors since you've been um publishing books have you uh, met some authors along the way or you just kind of been in your own zone i have uh i collaborate with um with editors because uh you need an editor you need an illustrator and um on that level yes I have several friends that are authors of different books. Like my daughter is an author of children's books. Um, she's a very good friend who is a best-selling 
children's book author. I should refer her to you so you can interview her. She's amazing. She's written, I think, 12 children's books and mm -hmm. was able to quit her job and just live off just that. And um, my friend Marie, whom you interviewed, is an author. So yes, I do collaborate with other authors. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is dry. <laughs> but yeah, um, um, do you have anything else that you uh, that I might not have covered as far as like uh, that you want people to know about as far as your books and uh, holistic health? I never cough like this. <clears throat> I think I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that again, please, Eric. <clears throat> um, do you have uh, anything else that you want people to know about as far as your books and holistic health, as far as uh, something that I might have not covered? I want to let folks know <clears throat> that my books, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health, and Share Recipe Book are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, and my website, rnmarvariley.com. <clears throat> I also want to let folks know that no matter how sick you are, no matter what the doctors say to you, there is always hope, no matter what's going on. But you've got to believe that. And you've got to be willing to make the necessary change to heal yourself. Because everything that we need to heal ourselves is within us. And it begins with the will to be healthy, the will to be strong. I want to let folks know you do not necessarily have to live on drugs all your life. Drugs have a lot of side effects, but if you'll be willing to change your lifestyle, you can reverse that blood pressure issue. You can reverse that cholesterol issue. You can reverse that diabetes, that type two diabetes. You can reverse that H pylori, all those conditions that I had that I was able to reverse using a healthy holistic approach. I wanna let people know that your health is the only wealth that you have. Because no matter how much money you have, no matter how much fame you have, no matter how well your business is doing, how much you've climbed the corporate ladder, et cetera, if you do not have your health, you have nothing. I want to let you know that now is the time to start working on your health. Don't wait until you're sick. Many of us, including me, waited until I was sick to try to recoup and get back what I was losing. Now is this time, time to start incorporating a healthier lifestyle, eating a little more salad, eating a little more fruits, drinking a little bit more water and getting rid of the junk to do a little bit more walking. You don't have to go to the gym every day, but you can walk for half an hour. The American Heart Association recommends a minimum of 30 minutes of walking every day to prevent heart disease and to help to reverse heart disease if you have it. It's just simple steps like that. Try to go to bed a little earlier, maybe half an hour, uh, an hour earlier because our bodies heal while we sleep. It's hot now. Rather than reaching for coffee or soda or juice, drink some water. Our body is 60% water. So we need water to hydrate um, properly. And just overall, take great care of your health. I'm on YouTube. <clears throat> Please follow me on YouTube, Marva Riley. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and LinkedIn. And I have a Facebook group called The Doctor in You. If you would send me a friend request, I'll be happy to have you in the group where we share, we inspire, and we motivate each other to be the healthiest version of themselves. Okay. And um, well, those are the platforms that you have right now. And uh, I'll also let people know how to uh, 
purchase the book? Like where where is all the where is the book for sale at? Like what are all the platforms you can get the book at? Okay. My books, and they're again, they're called Eat, Sleep, Meditate, and Nurses Guide to Health. This is what the first one looks like. It's a little red book. It's very easy to read. Most people read this book in, in two hours. That's what I've been told. And the other one is Share Recipe Book. Simple, healthy, easy, and inexpensive recipes written by myself, Marva Riley. And they are available on Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, and also on my website, rnmarvariley.com. And they're only $9.99 each. Okay. And that's what's up. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming on the uh, podcast today. Um, I don't just do uh, interviews, you know, uh, like I said earlier, when we first started, I uh, talk about a lot of real stuff because I like uh, talking about stuff that I know people come across in their everyday lives, whether it's that, you know, should you go 50-50 with your partner as far as finances or child support, things like that, that I know people going to come across at some point in their life. That was the whole reason why I started a podcast, just to do interviews and um, to uh, give people reassurance about themselves, confidence in themselves, to see different people talking about topics that they might be going through in their life and see that other people think the same way they do so it can get them confidence to think, oh, well, you know, I'm not crazy. You know, these people are doing the same thing that I'm doing, so. Real life stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, this uh, concludes today's episode. I appreciate you coming on. You can come on uh, anytime or uh, anytime I'm doing a real topic uh, besides the interview. I, uh, I drop episodes, well, I do multiple episodes a week, but I kind of switched up my approach because um, I was dropping multiple episodes a week, but I just switched it up now. So I only drop on Mondays at 12 o'clock now, like how the bigger uh, podcast platforms do. So just to uh, give people time to digest episodes instead of keep dropping them back to back, you know? So, uh, uh, your episode will come out next Monday uh, at 12 because I already got some other episodes I recorded before for, before you, but uh, I pushed them back to come out on later dates because uh, I already had touch bases with you before I had touch bases with them. So mm -hmm. it, it'll come out uh, next week at um, 12 o'clock next Monday. And I'll send you the links and stuff uh, once it drop or uh, well, you say you already subscribed to the YouTube, so you'll most likely get a notification, you know, when it... Yes, uh, I, I've been getting your notifications on YouTube, and I follow you on Instagram. Are you on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Facebook. I got uh, I got a personal Facebook, and I have a, a Facebook page that you can go like that's strictly for my podcast. It's called the Eric J. The Great Podcast. My personal Facebook is Eric Jones Jr. Okay, I will follow you on Facebook also. And uh, we can share these uh, amazing podcasts. Right, yeah, this is something I kind of got passionate about. You know, uh, I got legit on it. So I got my uh, LLC, DUNS number, EIN number, all that good stuff. So, uh, so I just, uh, and I ain't really doing this for money because I ain't really made no crazy money from this, but it's just that, you know, I just, this is something that I just like doing. Well, that's the thing. And, and, and really that's the essence of my movement also. It's not so much about the money. It's a, it's a cause that you're passionate about. And I believe the money will come because people are making money through podcasting, but I think they also started from grassroots like you you do or you did. And But if you're passionate about it and the passion catches on, you too will be able to monetize your, your podcast because I've listened to them and they're really enjoyable. Yeah, uh, I'm almost, I'm on a brink of getting monetized now. 
Like I already got three of the benchmarks. Uh, I'm just waiting to hit a thousand subscribers. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, then I can uh, get monetized because I got the watch hours and everything else. On Facebook? On uh, On YouTube, I'm sorry. YouTube, yeah. I monetized on Instagram and Facebook already. I just got monetized on Facebook last week. How does one get monetized on Facebook? Oh, uh, I just kept posting real, you know, Instagram and Facebook don't transition to reels now as far as like you getting more activity as far as engagement. So like everything I post as far as like uh, Very good. my guest videos, I post all those as reels instead of regular videos and uh Instagram. Um, I know Facebook, you they say you can make up to twelve hundred dollars a month off reels. So oh, that's wonderful. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Keep keep up the good work. Happy to hear that. That's good. <laughs> that's good news. <laughs> yeah. So your work is not your labor is not in vain. It's it's it it'll, it'll pick up because yeah, you know we we do these things for fun, but you need money also to live. So, oh yeah, I mean I I, uh, I work at the post office and I uh, got my retirement coming in, so I'm not uh, really tripping. But I mean, uh, this is something I do want to uh, get to like a real major level. That's why I've been um, investing in it heavy. So that's good. Congratulations. And thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this discussion. It just flowed. And that's what I noticed with your podcast also. They it's just so so such ease and comfort. And it just flows and uh you have a great energy. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I just try to keep it as a normal conversation. Like I don't like to have it like scripted. As far as like, you know, other people like I got questions, but like uh, sometimes I don't even go to those questions if because sometimes the conversation might lead to the question that I was about to ask. So I don't even got to look at them no more, you know. So. <laughs> That's good. It's like sitting at the kitchen table having a conversation. Right. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me. Right. So I appreciate you coming on the podcast and episodes drop next Monday at 12. And um, and uh, just uh, let me know uh, whenever you get a chance, when you listen to previous episodes, what you think about the previous episodes I already dropped. I think I got 61 episodes. So. OK, I'll definitely listen to some more and uh, and uh, and I'll comment on them. <laughs> But so far, I've listened to two, and they were really good. Okay. Yeah, I think you should listen to the police brutality one. That's the deepest podcast I ever did. My friend got put off the podcast because uh, he started talking about stuff that, you know, they don't want people to be talking about. So that's how I know people listen to your conversations, and they would not let me get him back on the podcast because he was talking about the NCAACP how Malcolm X got killed, like real stuff that I didn't even know, but it was factual. So, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, people listen. They, they, there's nothing that you do that is not known to the powers that be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, then uh, you have a good night. And this concludes today's episode. And um, um, you have a good one. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Are Bye you now.